Welcome biologists and in this video we're going to be looking at the stages of meiosis. In the previous video we had a look at the bits shaded in green there so if you do need to go back and recap please do. So meiosis is broken up into two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. This is the overview of meiosis 1 in which is the reduction division and this is the part where the DNA content is reduced by half. So we'll go over each stage. The first stage is prophase one. So early in prophase one, my chromosomes all start to become more condensed by coiling around those histones and the centrioles will move to the poles of the cell and the spindle fibers will start to form from them. Now, during prophase, we have a very important stage here called crossing over that occurs. So at this point, what happens is um, my homologous pairs of chromosomes will form bivalence, whereby they'll pair up together. And within the pair, my maternal chromosome will exchange information with my paternal chromosome. So you can see here, they cross over at a point which is called the chiasma, and they will exchange genetic information. So as you can see here, this is where there's no crossing over going on. But here you can see at the bottom here, crossing over has caused genetic variation. So crossing over is very, very important at helping to create genetic variation within my gametes. So within late prophase one, that's where the crossing over occurs between my bivalents. Metaphase one, this is where my bivalence will line up along the equator of the cell and the spindle fibers will attach to the centromeres. Now, this is where independent assortment occurs. And again, independent assortment is one of the ways in which genetic variation can be derived. So independent assortment, for example, here I have chromosome 4 and here I have chromosome 7. Now in this particular image here, you can see that chromosome 4 has been arranged this way and chromosome 7 has been arranged this way. Where if you look at this diagram here, my chromosome 7s have aligned up differently. They've, it's Independent assortment is to do with the random arrangement of chromosomes along the equator. Now, if you look at the gametes that are made as a result from these different ways in which the gam these chromosomes line up along the equator, these gametes here are different from these gam gametes here. So independent assortment is another way to create genetic variation within your gametes. Now, there are two ways in which chromosomes can line up along the equator, and there are 23 pairs of chromosomes within a human. Therefore, there are 2 to the power 28, which is more than 8 million possible ways in which these chromosomes can arrange themselves along the equator. This is why your eggs and your sperm, yes, they'll be very similar, but it's very, very unlikely that you're going to get one that's genetically identical to each other. So next phase is anaphase one, and this is where the bivalents are pulled apart by the spindle fibers contracting, pulling the chromosomes to the opposite poles of the cell. Now this is a step that halves the genetic information within the cells. The next phase is telophase one, and this is where the chromosomes begin to uncoil and become less condensed. The nuclear envelope will start to reform and the process of cytokinesis will begin. So cytokinesis is where that membrane will pinch, pinch off compromising and making up my two cells. We then go into meiosis 2. So in meiosis 2, we have prophase 2. And again, the spindle fibers will start to reform. My chromosomes will start to become more condensed. Now, there is no crossing over in prophase 2 because I have no bivalence to do the crossing over between. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes are going to line up along the equator of the cell. The spindle fibers are going to attach to the centromere. And again, here we have independent assortment, whereby the chromosomes will arrange themselves randomly on the equator. Anaphase 2 is where the chromosomes will be pulled to opposite poles of the cell by their centromere, by those contractile filaments contracting. Now at this point, the centromere is breaking here now. And as a result of this, my chromosomes are going to be pulled to opposite poles of the cell. Therefore, at the end of telophase, I will now get four haploid genetically different gametes. So telophase, the DNA will start to uncoil again, my nuclear envelope will start to reform, and eventually my membranes will pinch off in the process of cytokinesis. So there you have it. That is the the stages of meiosis involving all of the stages involved and what crossing over and independent assortment can do to give rise to genetic variation.